going to go over some of the settings now on each device that you're going to use to uh, set up a nice sound for your band. Well, how a mixer's broke down is you have individual channels for each uh, audio device. So if we isolate the first channel, which is uh, the main lead vocals, what you got is a fader. And you'll see a U or a zero. That's unity gain. And that's where you want to have most of your faders. I mean, you're going to have to drop a couple below. You want to really avoid trying to go any above. The reason why you want to keep unity gain at zero is that means basically the fader is not doing anything. It's not adding or taking away from the signal. And that's what you want. Because if you take too much away from the signal and then just the sensitivity on your amplifiers, you're going to bring out a lot of noise. You're going to amplify every little noise in your entire signal chain. And if you boost it up too high, you're going to have trouble with feedback and clipping devices down further in the signal chain. You got your pan. That's basically your right to left fader. This is a mono system, so it really has no effect. Other than if you'd want to break down, like I said in the other video, you could actually pan left, assign to group one and two, and it would only go to um, group one. But I've found that it, in both mixers I've had, this one and the one I previously had, that doesn't work very well. It, it leaks to the other, um, to the right channel, even though you have a pan to hoist to the left and you lose some gain. And it, most mixers have a little uh, EQ section. This actually has a little parametric EQ, which is nice for the mid. You know, and it's got the low and, and high EQ. And uh, effects one and two. Two is on board. I'll get to that. Like I said, that's a real good feature in a in a mixer, especially in a system this size, because it eliminates the need, at least from the start, to have an effects unit. You got uh, your two sends for your monitors, usually designated as AUX aux sends. I only have one monitor send set up on this unit, but you could set up two. And then the uh, last part is your gain section. You, what you want to do is you want to set most uh, mixers, and this is a feature you want to look for when you're purchasing one, should have a PFL level. So you basically push this in, have your uh, lead singer test the mic, do a check. You'll adjust your gain, and then you'll look over here on your decibel level, and again, you want to try to shoot for zero on that you want to keep everything zero everything unity gain at least that's your goal it doesn't know it doesn't happen at the end but that's what you want to try to strive for is unity gain and everything zero that way if he does go a little high you're not getting any peak distortion and then another nice feature you want to look for is a low cut what that does is really the only two uh, instruments Three, in, uh, three instruments in, in the band it's going to produce anything below 100 hertz sometimes the low cuts 80 that's doesn't really matter 80 would probably be a little more ideal because your guitar will go a little below 100 is your bass guitar your kick drum and if you have keyboards everything else doesn't need any frequency below 100 not only does that help clean up your mix it helps cut back feedback takes a little stress off your amplifiers you take out a lot of that low hum and it just makes everything sound a lot more crisp so that's a great feature you want to look for is a low cut feature and then you obviously you want you're going to want that based on per channel and available on all the channels so then you'll go through you'll do that same setup you'll adjust the EQ as needed which I'll go through a couple EQ settings here you'll adjust as close as you can to unity gain if not a little lower and uh, your gain set on your uh, solo PFL measurement the next thing you'll do is you'll group everything I have two groups I have the main submix which is your vocals your guitar bass keyboards and then I have the drums separated out ideally you'll have three like I said, I didn't have a lot of luck setting up the four channels on this. Even though I am running mono, if you're running stereo, you wouldn't have that choice. But ideally, you'd want your vocals, drums, and then all your instruments, each on a different subgroup. What that does is basically, if you're not familiar with subgroups, 
is all the drums I have put to sub three and four. So what I'll do first is I'll go through and individually set each drum up to where it sounds nice, say, you know, something like that. Say that just sounds fantastic by itself. The drummer's on stage. You know, everything sounds great right now. But then everybody else gets on stage and uh, it doesn't sound so good. It, it's maybe either too low or too high. Instead of having to go back through and adjust each one of these and get it just right, all I have to do is take these faders and say it's too loud, just take that down. And that's it. And then later on in the night, if it gets too low, bump it up a little bit. I don't have to adjust each one of these faders individually to do something like that. This is a very nice feature. Something you should look for even on a PA this small. The next thing, build-in effects. Fantastic. These are 32-bit effects. You want to look for the higher bit rate. Like I said, it doesn't have to be built into your mixer, but for a smaller system like this, you know, if you're not a national touring band, it saves a lot of money. An extra device you have to worry about. And they aren't bad. They really aren't. You know, all I run is just a nice reverb, just a medium hall reverb in the background. And just uh, I just basically send that just to the vocals. Really makes a nice, you know, effect on the vocals. It doesn't make it so sterile and... Uh, that's really all you need for, like I said, club zero to 300 people. The other feature in here is an EQ. Oh, on these smaller band, nine, seven, five, ten band EQs that are included on these, they're good to get started with, but eventually you are going to want to replace them. The reason why is you can't surgically go in and adjust frequencies the way you want to. You're adjusting one thing and you're really carrying a lot of frequencies with it when you make an adjustment. So it's really a messy way, but it will get the job done, cut some feedback out shape your sound a little bit until you can afford to get an EQ but that is something you're going to want to purchase down the road. We got here a brake switch. This is not a feature in a lot of mixers but it is a really nice feature. It basically mutes all these channels everything except for the tape input which I use my iPod for. For in between sets so you can easily just push that button start the music and then go take a break. You don't have to worry about muting all your channels or having an amp or a microphone feedback while you're away from the mixer. You got your main. Once again you're going to want to strive for unity gain. What I usually do is get it the sensitivity on the amps to the point where at unity gain it's louder than what I need about 5% 10% and then just pull that back a little bit. What that gives me is a little bit if later on it gets more packed doesn't sound like it's carrying as much I can bump it up a little bit and still be at unity gain or a little lower. One other thing is uh, that you'll get to use is uh, insert jacks. What an insert jack is basically it takes the signals coming in here from the microphone it goes out through the insert jack into the device that you're inserting out of the device and then back in here before it gets to the gain structure of that channel. That's really useful for effects especially compression. Also this has a main insert a lot of mixers don't. That's a great feature. What that does is send the entire mix right here out and then back in before it goes to its main structure. What that allows for is mainly it really helps with compressors. The reason why is because a lot of people run their compressors in line. They'll take their line out, go directly into their compressor. And the problem with that is when you bump the volume up, the compressor, how it works, it's getting a higher volume so it's compressing more. You don't want to do that. You want an even compression throughout the, you know, the range of your volume. So if you lower the volume you have the same amount of compression, you don't want your compression to adjust on your volume. You want it to be independent and that, how you achieve that is running it through an insert. And of course you got your aux out, that's your monitors, and then your XLR out for your mains. Okay, what I got here is, I, this is the effects that I'm running through that insert that I explained earlier. Basically, I got uh, compression on the kick, lead vocals, and the main mix. What a uh, compressor does, basically, to go over it real quick, is most of them have a no uh, noise gate built in because just using a compression effect brings up the low-level noise. 
so you really need to use a noise gate there just a simple threshold you want to keep that relatively low because all you want to do is cut out that background noise you don't want to cut out any low singing low instruments or anything like that and then what do you got your standard uh, settings on a compressor you got your threshold that's at what point the compressor kicks in you got your ratio that's how much it actually compresses the sound you got your attack that's how quickly it grabs that signal so the more attack you have if it's a real quick if it's a real quick peak it will get through the compression and not be compressed the lower the attack it will grab those even those real quick peak moments the release is how long it keeps it before it releases that compression all this affects and you, you can run most of it auto unless you really want to get a specific uh, sound but I usually generally run them just in auto except for my lead vocals and then you got uh, like I said a 30 uh, band EQ 32 band 31 they come in all different uh, groups They're really nice what it does is it allows you to really surgically go through and shape your mix by uh, frequencies and what you generally want to do there's a couple schools of thought one is to keep it basically flat and adjust to the venue that's how professionals do it what I found I like a little both the monitors I keep generally flat as you can see usually you want to pull around 2k down that's really a really strong uh, feedback uh, frequency and then just basically you want to you want to do it gracefully and just slowly contour down around 2k that will help a lot with feedback do the same thing on the mains and then you generally want to bump around two, 200 um, hertz that gives it a nice warm sound and if you notice what I did here is I did the traditional wave style EQ setting and I only have it set to a six decibel change which doesn't do as uh, strong as a modification I really one school of thought is this where you basically contour it to match a natural wave form another one would be scooped which you don't want to do on your main mix because you just cut out a ton of frequencies on guitar or bass or something that's fine if you're going for that type of style but on your main mix you want to not you want to avoid scooping your EQ because you're just going to cut your vocals and uh, a lot of your uh, guitar and drums out but uh, what I did was just a traditional where you follow a wave form that seems to sound nice like I said around 200 Hertz gives you a nice warm sound around 2 uh, K is where to you get that boxy sound you cut that out and adds to the warmth again and then you always want to keep your bass a little above or at least at uh, zero because you don't want to cut your bass out same thing with your highs because that's going to give you a clean sound now your final part is your crossover you basically this is a standard two three way crossover uh, what I find is I usually cut around 120 Hertz so 120 Hertz down to the subs and then 120 Hertz up to the mains and I also do the same cut on the monitor and then the last thing is your power amplifiers this is not a volume control many people think it is this is where a lot of problems get started right here and a lot of mistakes happen you don't want to turn these up to zero you want to have them down as absolutely low as you can the more you turn them up the more you're going to pick up signal noise so if anybody ever complains that their system's noisy chances are they have them cranked if you blow horns a lot chances are you have them turned up because that's how you blow horns you can see where I have this set I'd probably go up to about 11 o'clock in a in a gig and uh, that's plenty of power this is not like I said again this is not a volume control it's a sensitivity so as long as you're running zero unity gain out of your uh, main mix you shouldn't have to turn the sensitivity up very high in your amplifiers okay I hope you enjoyed my video on uh, setting up a PA and if you have any questions comments you know put it in the comments section or get a hold of me and I'll help you out if you have any questions purchasing or setting something up or trying to fix a problem. Thank you very much.